So the whole thing effectively turns full circle. Correct. But then it normally does. Given enough time, yeah. But it, that, that's really what I meant, because it seems that we're at a, a, a period in rock music when things are going back to where they were when they were, when they were new and when they were fresh, but with a lot more power. I think what we have is a situation, uh, especially in the last two years, where there's, excitement-wise, there's not a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of bands coming up trying to, to create what, what was created a decade ago and not quite making it on the rock and roll level. And we have, on the pop scene, we have nothing going on at all. I mean, we have a, um, a fashion show going on, which has nothing to do with music, whatever. Um, what I hope we can re-inject is a little bit of thought, a little bit of class into, into heavy rock and roll. Because um, I think it's time that somebody actually said, come on, there's more to it than just making a loud noise and playing at 300 miles an hour for two hours. There's more to it than that. That's a very important part of it, but the, that's only one part of it. Um, and the thing of Full Circle is correct. Things go through a, a, a series like a doldrum period, and they go through high points. Uh, like the late 60s going to the 70s was a high point. The mid-70s was a low point. We seem to be coming to a high point again where uh, rock and roll music can be exciting again. We've got some exciting bands, but speaking as a, as a Britisher and a European, it's a bit annoying because all the exciting bands seem to be coming from America at the moment. And that's not the way God intended it. You know? But uh, to... To continue any excitement, you need the con continued excitement of an audience. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Right. If there is a gamble, that's it. Um, I believe it will work because all we ever gave in the old days was excitement, quality. And that's all we can ever give now. Um, I believe that the things that were important then are still important now. But you can probably give it to a much greater extent now based on the experience that you've had you know, since the time Purple broke up because the experience that every member of the band has had has been phenomenal. Yes, but none of the experience that's happened since has been on the same level as Purple was. All we can do is what we did then and, and realize that we have to be in, in the 80s now, not the 70s. Mm -hmm. Let me say we actually play any differently. We have to realize that the needs are different now. We say, I don't believe you can do 15 and 20 minute drum solos. I don't believe you can, you can leave a guitarist on his own for half an hour on stage. You can't do that. Then you could, because then you were breaking down all the boundaries and all the things that people said you couldn't do. You said, yes, we can. We can do what the hell we want. You know, it's up to you whether you like it or not, but we'll do what we want. Yeah. That's been done. The boundaries have now been broken down. Uh, I think we all realize that, and that's why I think it'll work. I don't think we're trying to sell them 1972 and 1973 again. Uh, that that would be wrong. It would be criminal. But they are going to call for the 1972 and they're and going to get a lot of them. Tunes. They're going to get a lot of them, too, because uh, just in the week's rehearsal we've had, they're a lot of fun to play again. There's a lot of good uh, good physical quality in the songs we made. More so than they, they ever were, there ever was on record. I mean, so the, the songs on record were okay. On stage, they were brilliant, and it's still that way. Mm -hmm. they're, they're much better to play live, and, even to ourselves, than they ever were on record. And when you put them in front of an audience, especially a big audience, they're that much better again. Can I ask you, of all the tracks that you recorded with the bands that you worked with mm -hmm. since Purple Split, yeah. which track do you think is best representative of you? I'd have to name two, probably. Uh, probably on the last Gary Moore album, probably Victims of the Future, the actual track itself. And the second one was a White Snake track called uh, Crying in the Rain. A lovely, heavy, slow shuffle. Yeah. Which is a, a feel I've always liked. So those two tracks were the ones that if I have to play somebody to a friend or somebody who doesn't know anything I, that I do, one of those tracks would be what I would play.